a congressional hearing over AI. Drugs are turning people in LA into zombies, at least more so than usual, and Wall Street is preparing for the US to default on its debt. That and more on this week's headlines. Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. Before we begin, I talked to a fan who said YouTube has secretly unsubscribed him from America Uncovered three times. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And if you have subscribed, subscribe again. The Centers for Disease Control warned that the US could see a resurgence of MPOX, formerly known as monkeypox, after a handful of cases were reported in Chicago. Monkeypox was renamed by the World Health Organization, saying it contained racist and stigmatizing language. And so now, they're calling it Mpox. Gee, I wonder what the M stands for. But the bigger issue is we might see widespread Mpox again. Can we please end the Writers Guild of America strike already? I'm sick of reruns. This is the worst rerun I've seen since the second Iraq war. Don't you hate rehash material? Speaking of things that spread, zombies. Given how 2023 is going, I'm not surprised that I'm about to cover a story involving zombies. I'm surprised it took this long. Los Angeles officials are trying to stop the spread of xylazine, also known as Trank or the zombie drug, due to it leaving people strung out and causing their skin to rot. Xylazine, a sedative used for large animals such as cattle and horses, is often used to cut fentanyl. Los Angeles County Health Department officials said when combined with opioids like fentanyl, as is frequently the case, xylazine enhances the life-threatening effect of respiratory depression caused by opioids, increasing the risk of overdose and death. Officials are having a hard time combating this spread because xylazine is legal. It's an FDA-approved drug used by veterinarians. The FDA could theoretically rescind its approval, but that wouldn't be fair to the animals. They shouldn't have to be operated on while biting down on a belt like they're Rambo. Only real bad asses could handle that. While it's especially bad in Los Angeles, this is a nationwide problem. DEA Administrator Ann Milgram said, the DEA has seized xylazine and fentanyl mixtures in 48 of 50 states. The DA laboratory system is reporting that in 2022, approximately 23% of fentanyl powder and 7% of fentanyl pills seized by the DEA contained xylazine. The worst drug threat in America just got worse. But on the bright side, this is actually good news for a lot of millennials, since so many of us did way more planning for a zombie apocalypse than for retirement. That's obviously a joke. Millennials will never be able to retire. We'll need to be as resourceful as Link from Tears of the Kingdom to survive this upcoming recession. Check out my video on that from our other channel, Gamers Unbeaten. Plugged. Link is below. Speaking of apocalypses, the robots are taking over. At least, that's what a lot of people are afraid of with the rise of AI. And so a Senate Judiciary Committee held a hearing about oversight on AI, as lawmakers sought to better understand the risks of this new technology and set guidelines for it. U.S. lawmakers tried to better understand AI. Half of them are so old, the only robots they understand are of the rock'em sock'em variety. Senator Richard Blumenthal opened the hearings with a speech written by ChatGPT, read by an AI deepfake of his voice. He said the primary aim of these hearings was to write the rules concerning AI as the technology continues to develop. Our goal is to demystify and hold accountable those new technologies to avoid some of the mistakes of the past. The hearings featured Professor Emeritus at New York University, Gary Marcus, who specializes in neuroscience and AI research, Vice President and Chief Privacy and Trust Officer at IBM, Christina Montgomery, and Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT. Gary Marcus said, AI is one of the most important issues of our times, with enormous potential, both positive and negative and it's crucial that we get it right. And Altman urged legislators to regulate AI, saying it could potentially cause harm to the world. 
Artificial intelligence can be as helpful as the Iron Giant or as dangerous as the Iron Giant. I just hope this AI doesn't also make me cry every time I see it. AI isn't regulated at the moment, mostly because agencies and lawmakers don't fully understand it. Montgomery said policymakers should swiftly act to better understand and mitigate the risks of foundation models while still ensuring the approach to governing AI remains risk-based and technology neutral. I don't think that should be a challenge. How hard can it be for the government to understand? I've been to DC. I've never seen so much artificial intelligence. More after the break. Welcome back. A man carrying a baseball bat entered the office of Virginia Representative Jerry Conley, a Democrat, and attacked two of his staffers. The man was detained by police and the staffers were treated for non-life-threatening injuries. The suspect who struck the two with the bat said, hey, I thought I was allowed three strikes. Conley said, I have no reason to believe that his motivation was politically motivated, but it is possible that the sort of toxic political environment we all live in you know, set him off. And I would just hope all of us would take a little more time to be careful about what we say and how we say it. He's not 100% sure of what caused it, but thinks we should try and be less toxic anyway, just in case? What? Like climate change? Ugh, typical Democrat. Always trying to tell us how to live our lives. We ought to... Oh. Yeah, maybe politics in America has gotten a bit divisive. Speaking of divisiveness, it's time for another round of Everything is White Supremacy! The Olympia School District in Washington State is planning to cut certain music classes in its elementary schools because they might foster white supremacy. The school district admitted the primary reason for the music classes being removed was due to budget cuts. But they said while there's nothing inherently white supremacist about instruments, they're not offered equitably, and they foster traditions of excellence, which is white supremacy. Saying only white people have a tradition of excellence definitely sounds racist, but not in the way they think. As someone with a degree in music composition, I think the school board is wrong. Mainly about saying instruments aren't inherently white supremacist. How else do you explain why the black keys on a piano are only half notes? That's why I quit music because I'm an ally. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed a bill banning public colleges from using taxpayer money to fund diversity and equity programs, and teaching courses based on theories that systemic racism, sexism, oppression, or privilege are inherent in the institutions of the United States. This is similar to a spat Florida had with the College Board over an AP African American Studies course. It's actually a pretty complex topic, so you should check out that episode. But it seems like these days everything in schools is either woke or white supremacy. There's an obvious solution here. No more school! Huh. I can't tell if all these controversies are actually worried parents, or if this is a long con by kids to get an endless summer vacation. Speaking of things that are educational, Donald Trump said if he's elected president again, he would release all the files related to the JFK assassination. Just like he promised back in 2018. Can Trump even do that? Hey, when have rules ever stopped him before? I say, why stop there? He should also promise that if he's elected, he'll expose where Tupac and Elvis, who are still alive, are living, what the aliens in Area 51's favorite Baskin Robbins flavor is, and everyone who visited Jeffrey Epstein's island. The funny part about that joke is how sad it is that the Epstein thing is the least plausible out of the bunch. And after the break, the World Health Organization advises not using non-sugar sweeteners. Welcome back. The World Health Organization recommended against using non-sugar sweeteners such as aspartame and stevia for weight control. So you're saying I should just stick with regular sugar? Fine by me. What's that, Shelley? Actually, that isn't their recommendation. The WHO Director for Nutrition and Food Safety said non-sugar sweeteners are not essential dietary factors and have no nutritional value. People should reduce the sweetness of the diet altogether, starting early in life to improve their health. So they're saying we should try and cut all sweet treats out of our diet to be healthy? Well, what's the point of living? Plus, I don't believe it. You know who was known for making tons of sweet treats? Martha Stewart. And she, at 81, 
was named the cover model of the 2023 Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. That's a figure that was sculpted by desserts and prison gyms. Speaking of things that aren't healthy for you, getting executed. The Supreme Court allowed an Alabama death row inmate's lawsuit to stand. It claimed the state's plan to execute him via lethal injection would be cruel and unusual punishment. The Supreme Court initially gave Alabama the go-ahead to execute the prisoner last November, vacating a lower court's decision to stay the execution. However, officials couldn't properly set the IV line used for lethal injection before his death warrant expired, so they had to call it off. Alabama has repeatedly faced issues with lethal injection and has had to call off a number of executions as a result. To be fair to Alabama, considering how many people there refuse to get the COVID vaccine, they're probably just out of practice giving people injections. The inmate claims that attempting to execute him via lethal injection after failing the first time is cruel and unusual, and the Supreme Court is now letting this lawsuit proceed. The condemned is seeking to be killed by nitrogen gas instead. Yeah, he's still cool with being executed, and that's the method he's requesting. I'm shocked he isn't demanding death by snoo snoo. That's the most humane way to die. President Biden and Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy met again to try and make a deal over what to do about the debt ceiling. They still didn't reach one, but McCarthy said it was possible it could happen soon. Even though Democrats are urging Biden not to make a deal that could hurt low-income Americans or affect their plans to fight climate change, Biden and McCarthy met and didn't come to a compromise over the debt ceiling. Again, can we please end the Writers Guild of America strike already? I'm sick of reruns. This is the worst rerun I've ever seen since the Second Iraq War. Don't you hate rehash material? Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said that her initial estimates were correct and the Treasury could run out of money and would no longer be able to pay its obligations as early as June 1st. That is, unless something is done about the debt ceiling. The debt ceiling is the amount of money the U.S. government can borrow. If it defaults, there could be a rise in interest rates, as well as a delay in payments of Social Security benefits, tax refunds, and military salaries. But don't worry, I'm sure the military would be happy to fight for free. I mean, it's not like they're having such a hard time finding recruits that they're resorting to trying to get gamers to sign up. Back off, military. Recruiting gamers is my deal. For our other channel, Gamers Unbeaten. Plug twice. The fact we're so close to the expected default date without a solution on the table has many people worried, especially on Wall Street. Several organizations are making contingency plans on how to proceed if the government is no longer able to pay its debts. The managing director of the Securities Industry and Financial Markets Association said, it is difficult because this is unprecedented, but all we're trying to do is make sure we develop a plan with our members to help them navigate through what would be a disruptive situation. One plan that's been floated before during previous debt crises, and now floated again, is the idea of having the Treasury just mint a $31 trillion coin to pay off the U.S. debt. That's a ridiculous idea, for a lot of reasons. You know how annoyed you get when you drop a quarter between your car seat and the center console, and you can't reach it no matter how hard you try? Well, imagine that happening with this coin, and multiply that frustration by $124 trillion. So the U.S. may be closer than ever to defaulting on its debt, causing millions of Americans to be delayed in receiving payments they'll desperately need in a terrible economy that just got even worse. On the bright side, the zombie and or robot apocalypse are right around the corner, and money in that society is meaningless. All that matters is survival, and maybe a sweet gaming channel to pass the time while you wait for your inevitable doom. Plugged thrice. So what do you think about the stories we covered this week? Leave your comments below. And if you want to help us deliver nonpartisan news, be sure to support America Uncovered by going to patreon.com slash America Uncovered. All it takes is as little as a dollar or more per episode to fight YouTube censorship and demonetization. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.